fuck Leslie Moonves. He's responsible for derailing Janet Jackson's career. It's the Going Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. Muse, how are you doing? What were we just talking about? First of all, uh, if you guys don't know about that, definitely go look that up. But uh, what what were we just talking about? About uh, some app that was, like, defunct? We were talking briefly about some things that, like, seem like they were going to be big and then never really fucking took off. You mentioned something that we might talk about, might not, but you reminded me of that app where it was, like, it was supposed to be the new social media network, and then it found out, like, within three days, it was like, oh, yeah, they're mining people's data. Quick, delete your accounts. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Vero or Nero. You remember what I'm oh, talking about? Oh, oh shit! I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because I remember hearing a story like that. It was just like, wow. Well, uh, like I was thinking about getting on it, and then it was just like, all right, I didn't even have time. <laughs> it, it's almost like you heard there was a party, so you're wa- you're walking down the the, the right. hallways of the hotel. And you're like, oh, what fucking room was it again? I don't remember. And you're checking all the room numbers. And then finally you just see like a wave of people running in the opposite direction. No, (laughs) fuck it. Go back. (laughs) And you're like, oh shit. What the fuck? (laughs) Like you were lucky enough. (laughs) Meanwhile, I'm in that sea of people because not only was it like a pain in the ass to delete your account. Like usually you just fucking go in a thing, you hit a button hey, uh, is there a specific reason you want to delete your account? And you could be like, yeah, it just didn't work out. And you could be like, okay, cool, bye, thanks for using whatever, whatever. Oh, you can't just leave. <laughs> no, it, like, you hit the button, and then I was like, okay, uh, you'll be receiving an email in a, in a couple days. It's like, a couple days? Someone sent me an email, and I had to actually, like, answer them back. And luckily, they were like, oh, okay, but, like, I swear my account was active for, like, four days before the shit actually got deleted i forget what it was fucking called but like nobody stayed on there almost like um mastodon they were trying to make a rival app to twitter almost like how gab yep yep i remember Uh uh-huh yeah is like the right wing kind of like alt-right playground right now so they were like well if twitter is going to allow harassment we're going to open up a new app and people are going to be able to use it and free of hate speech and all of this. And all I heard about it was that Will Wheaton got his account deleted in a couple days and was like, oh, but what? I'm thinking about like the Rihanna thing with Snapchat as well. Like I'm thinking oh, like, it's yeah. funny. Like, is there a trend of like celebrities making or breaking apps? Because I didn't hear anything about snapchat after rihanna was like nah i'm not fucking with it yeah you know now that you mention it i didn't even really think (laughs) about that but yeah i like how we're like jumping ship to like different apps like their ships on the the internet seas and like right now we're on the twitter hub and you know i still got some luggage over on the uh ss facebook but you know, if I see too many holes in that, I might I might take my luggage off of that shit and just be right on the Twitter one for a while. I'm I'm seeing good prospects over on uh, Instagram. Yeah, but yeah. you know, I don't know how I feel about it yet. You know, since you mentioned Facebook, it reminded me, I deleted my Facebook around the time of the Cambridge Analytica bullshit. Every time I hear someone mention Facebook, they're always talking about some probably not real thing, like a video or a news story, Hmm. and it just feels like Facebook has become the checkout line tabloids. Yo! Oh my god, it's true! Facebook has become the replacement for- It's the the National Enquirer, fucking Weekly World (laughs) News ass. Fucking Batboy lives. It's the (laughs) National- It's the National Enquirer of, like, the Amazon storefront. You know, when you're going to buy your stuff. And, like, Uh, right before... You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going throughout your day. You're going to Facebook. And, like, that's your version of, like, your trashy column that you pick up. (laughs) And and then you're like, oh, yeah, I was going to buy some things. And you know what I'm saying? You're here on Amazon. You bought some shit. (laughs) You know, you bought a drone or something, you know? Like, that's our new version of that. I only hear older people ever talk about Facebook, and it it really does kind of feel like, I heard this thing, and it's like, oh, just just get off that fucking platform, dude. Nothing good is going to come from that site. It's phony bullshit, and people telling me about 
people turning out to be shitty. Right? <laughs> I never you know, hear anything I, I, positive that. about that website anymore. People were talking about, it's funny, we're criticizing the, the medium we're on right now. Uh, but, you know, people talking about how the algorithm, you know, that's kind of like the new big phrase now, right? Just saying like, yo, the algorithm brought me here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't believe the algorithm suggested this shit to me. Like, what the fuck's going on? And like, there's so much, because the thing about it is, at the end of the day, there's so much shit on YouTube. Our brains cannot even fathom or comprehend it. Like, every day you find a new, like, block of YouTube that you didn't know was there. And you're like, what the fuck? I didn't know there was all this shit over here. You know what I mean? Like, you're always constantly uncovering new videos. I saw that there's a new millennial edition of Monopoly. Oh, no. Does it? it let me guess. There's a cell phone. There's a fucking fidget spinner. <laughs> there's a fucking... <laughs> am I wrong? There's a fucking uh, 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 tablet. There's a uh, goddamn uh, uh, YouTube play button or some shit. You're talking about the pewter pieces, am I right? Precisely, precisely. Yeah. I want to try to see if I can get it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going like to pull it up and double check. some shit. <laughs> What's the uh, new tech? Oh, a drone. You know, oh, it's got to be a okay. drone. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, what are those fucking things? Uh, things that you ride on. Oh, a fucking hoverboard? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you... Oh, please tell me! <laughs> you should have a job at Hasbro, because you put way more thought into it. Oh, no! So, here, here's what you got. You got, uh, you got six pieces. You got a bicycle. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You know what's funny? I was thinking bicycle, and I was just like... Wait, that's stupid. Bicycles have been around for over like a hundred years. <laughs> what, what old man, what fucking Monty Burns dumbass <laughs> would <laughs> fucking think that that would be the new thing? It's a fucking penny yeah, I was, farthing. Funny. I was just watching this fucking Simpsons episode where Marge was like, uh, you know, Lisa, you guys uh, still like bicycles, right? And, you know, she was just like, yes, of, of course we do. Why? And she's just like, I don't know. I don't know what you kids are into these days. I'm out of the loop. <laughs> so you got a fucking regular, <laughs> regular ass bicycle. Then you get a hashtag. All right. Yeah. B a boo! A little pound sign. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know what it is? Because they couldn't do the Twitter logo because they'd have to pay for that. Exactly, exactly. Then you got a regular ass, analog ass camera. Then you've got a Monopoly Man head with the hat. Yeah, it's just that. Does that do anything uh, I was for thinking, you? like, maybe if he had, like, a fucking man butt or some shit. Oh! Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> we'll get to his ass in a second, because... <laughs> maybe that's underneath the hat. <laughs> <laughs> then you got... And he's hiding it, because, he, you know, he came in that day, and he, he looked in the mirror. He took that extra look in the mirror, and he was kind of ashamed. Yeah, I was like, mm. Then you got a pair of sunglasses. Is it at least, like, the those douchebag... Like, you know, like the um, Kanye blinds. Yeah, yeah, no. exactly. You know exactly what mm. I'm thinking about. Yeah, yeah. Nope. It's just regular ass, oh, standard God. issue sunglasses. And that reference would have been 10 years too late. <laughs> Maybe that's why they were like, you know what? It's best we not even bother. But then, I will give them this. The last one is a fucking crying, laughing emoji. Okay. The one... That works. <laughs> the, the appropriate enough one. Now That's generic enough they can use it. Now, with Mr. Monopoly Bags guy, I forget his fucking name. <laughs> yeah, the fucking... Th there's a picture of him on the back of the box, and uh, he's wearing a pair of sunglasses, regular-ass sunglasses, nothing weird about them. Uh, he's got a coffee in his hand in a to-go cup. And the logo looks like the go space on the board. So he's got his cell phone out and he's taking a selfie. Because, you know. Okay. Okay. He, he ain't got no Crocs on or nothing. <laughs> this is where it gets cringy. He has, like, a medal pinned on his, uh, on his lapel. 
and it says participation. What? He's got a participation award. You know. Wait. That thing that... Oh, no. Oh, Oh, no. Was that the Monopoly Brothers getting a little jab in? It's a little jab. (laughs) But what you reminded me of... Uh, Oh, they they, they killed him. They killed him at the country club that week when they came up with that one. (laughs) Forget real estate. You can't afford it anyway. So instead of buying things, there's places on the board, like clubs and hot spots, and you have to be the trendiest one who gets to all the places first. Oh yeah, I've been there, like bragging. You know what I think it is? Maybe they're trying to say, like, you're getting uh, internet points for going to all these- It's clout! Exactly, and their ultimate message- You get your fucking clout coin. So life was commentary, Monopoly was commentary, you know- and so this is their commentary by saying, all you kids chasing after all this clout, that's going to eventually add up to nothing. Because you're playing a dumbass fucking over 100 years old ass game that no one should have fucking played after the first 30 minutes they bought it. I'm sorry, I'm totally hating on Monopoly. <laughs> by, by changing the rules of Monopoly, it's almost insinuating that capitalism isn't a problem anymore. Now that that commentary is passe. <laughs> oh, okay. It's irrelevant. The real issue is these kids who need to pull their pants up. It's these kids with their cell phones. Yes, Bill Cosby. Uh, <laughs> you gotta pull the fucking pants up. Th- these criminals, you see them? They Maybe curse Bill a Cosby lot. Bill should have done some pulling up of his own pants. <laughs> fucking getting hit in the face with frozen food. Jesus Christ. <laughs> is that how you thought it would end, by the way? No. You hear fucking stories no. of Bill Cosby getting frozen no. chicken patties getting thrown at his blind face. Oh, man. No, not like this. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. To my brother Russell, who I slept with, I got uh. frozen chicken patties thrown at my face in the clink. <laughs> to my 73 women whom I oh. <laughs> molested. Jesus Christ. He's got to give a call out to his good friend, Fat Albert, who bursts through the wall and helps him out. Oh, man. You know what's really funny? I was watching a South Park episode where they were making fun of uh, Fat Albert. You know, Oh, my like God. That that... Ra- I remember that episode. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and now it's so funny to just, like, look at this. Because, you know, in the 90s, Bill Cosby's still America's dad, and so oh, we're taking that Bill Cosby down a peg or two by making fun of his cartoon, by making it really fucked up and R-rated. And now it's just like, man, you don't, <laughs> you don't need that. Bill Cosby don't need that. You don't need that hit against him anymore. It's not working. You didn't go nearly far enough. Yeah, exactly. This is child's play now. <laughs> Look, once the B in Bill Cosby became a P on the internet, it's over. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when it became Bill Cosby, nah. <laughs> it's a whole other level of making fun of a motherfucker now. <laughs> Guys, this week, I went down a rabbit hole of trying to figure out what the fuck Blackshirt was, right? So, I- I'm cruising around on the internet. All of a sudden, I have a thought. And I think, hey, whatever happened to that thing that um, Praz from the Fugees was advertising on a- 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 in the Super Bowl earlier this year? The funny thing is, I know everyone is probably literally going, wait, what? Because just like Praz, honestly, the commercial was very forgettable. And like, it was just like, you're not, you weren't really sure why it was important. Just like Praz's, you know, legacy as an artist. I do not remember that shit at (laughs) all. So like, I I look back because I remember it being like 100% black owned platform that would give a voice to black culture where black creativity will be celebrated, not tolerated, where a light will be shined on black. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, I want to see what this is about. I mean, I have trepidations because I can't think of any member of Fuji so far that hasn't turned out to be kind of an asshole. So, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, all right, Lord help. Mm, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, let me back up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Once that trust gets kind of breached, you kind of like, I'm just cool on the Fujis for right now. But you yeah. came up. You know, and you're not even, like, the one that I really liked, you know what I mean? So I'm (laughs) already kind of like, what are you doing, you know? But I was like, I decided to check it out. But the thing is, 
you can't find any fucking information on what this app actually is. Matter of fact, I- I'm calling it an app. I don't even know if it's an app. I looked it up, like, all the information I could find. The funny thing is, I sent you uh, the-, the first link I could find. I was like, oh, I know what to do. I'll go to the Twitter page. For sure, they'll have some information on there. Because I remember going to the website. And, like, you know how sometimes these New Age websites, they, they just want to look sleek without actually, like, telling you what the fuck, you know, is going on. So I'm thinking like, all right, boom, let me go to the Twitter page. They'll probably make it a little bit more plain. And it's like, uh, watch Praz, uh interview with TMZ below. And, you know, it's a 45 second video. And it's like, uh, you know, uh, Pro- and they specifically say Praz talks black shirt and what it has to offer to the culture. You know, OK, so we're going to get the answer to what this has to offer to the culture. 30 seconds passes and we don't even like Praz hasn't even said anything yet. It's just like the introduction of him. And he says, basically, Blackshire is a platform that's for the culture. And the video cuts off. What the fuck is this app? (laughs) And so I'm like, okay, well, this video has to be somewhere, right? Like the rest of this video, it's got to be somewhere. Look it up on YouTube, no problem. Looked up uh, Praz, Blackshire, TMZ. Didn't find it. But what I did end up finding was uh, an article on CSNBC, Grammy-winning Fuji founder bringing blockchain to your smartphone. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So so that's what this was. Blackchair is this blockchain thing. But listen, he says, founding member of the Fuji's, Praz Michelle, is launching a blockchain-enabled smartphone that lets users earn dividends on every purchase. The $300 smartphone launches this fall and is part of michelle's digital platform blackshire so wait so what is blackshire itself <laughs> like i was thinking like oh okay we know what it is now we're, well it's part of the edition we're like oh uh. shit all right <laughs> <laughs> now i don't know what anything is again at first you were reminding me of um he who shall not be named with that fucking what's it called blacksit what remember what i'm talking about with fucking uh Kanye's dumbass, the facts in history that they don't want black people to know, and he fucking called it like Blacksit, almost like Brexit, <laughs> but it meant like a black I, I, dude, that's exit good by me. Yeah, from... No, I, I am not paying attention to his ass. <laughs> it, it was I like, tuned, it was in I that really short down, window down. between where he was like actually still saying that dumbass shit, and then like a week later after the website launched, he was like, I am no longer going to talk politics. I've, I've oh, realized yeah. <laughs> that I've oh, been yeah, used. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, the next thing he tweeted was a picture of what a pickle know, with his face on it. And he was like, hey, I'm pickle, yay. And the internet was like, nope. <laughs> this ain't yeah, it, chief. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Like, Nice try. I-, I get it. Rick and Morty and internet, you're thinking that was going to be, but nah. <laughs> I like that that's where he thinks, like, this is my redemption. This is on my road to redemption. A Rick and Morty <laughs> being <meme>. silly. And, <laughs> and you know what it is? Actually, if he wanted to be smart, what he would have done was say, wubble up, dub dub. Donald Trump doesn't want us to have Szechuan sauce. Eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> but I'm reading the article, and, the, and the thing is, it's like, um... Uh, the first retail move for Blackshire is the launch of Motif, a $300 smartphone that hits stores this fall. Now, feel this, feel this. Michelle said Motif users will earn a percentage on every purchase when they pay using their phone, which unlike airline miles can be redeemed for cash. And so it's like, wait, wait, wait. You're saying that there's a phone out there where you could just like, whenever you spend money, you are going to get a whole bunch of money back, like a considerable amount. And that's not the fucking number one phone in the country right now. (laughs) I smell bullshit. (laughs) But what's funny is when I watched the video, it was like, it was kind of obvious. He kind of didn't know what he was talking about. It was one of those like, all right, here are the talking points that they told me to say. And then whenever they asked them to elaborate, he goes like, well, you see, these are the talking points they told me to say. (laughs) Uh, And you know what's funny, what it reminded me of was... Remember when Will I Am was like, hey, I got this thing. It was like Instagram filters, but you could put it on everyday photos, and it's really yeah, expensive, he... and it snaps onto the front of your cell phone. It's like, yeah, we just have Instagram for that. But that was like... Yeah, exactly. It was like when he was still popping off. It was like around the same time he had that really big hit single with Britney Spears. Like, 
wasn't Homie washed thought it was going to be the Elon Musk of the of the rap game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did get that kind of because I remember it, it was around that time. I think it was a screaming shot video. weren't there a whole bunch of shit that he was slapping his name on, like a like a typewriter, a hipster typewriter that you could put on your phone or some shit, and like a three D printer. That uh, that was another thing. It's basically like a sort of a retro futuristic, like, oh, this looks old timey, but it's actually modern tech, you know? Yeah. It's like the only reason we'd be doing that is for like novelty. If someone wants to do like a updated like Flintstones gag or something. <laughs> Which is like going back to the Monopoly thing. I feel like that's the only way or the only reason anyone would buy it. As, like, a gag gift for, like, their grandson or something. Yeah, see, that, that's the problem with a lot of these things. It's, like, these apps and a, a whole lot of these apps, they're being made by people who, like, aren't the age that these apps are marketed to. Yeah. And so they're just, like, you know what I'm saying? They're, like, old people. Like, the people behind this Monopoly thing, they're not a bunch of 20-somethings that God, are, no. you know, young upstarts trying to take the uh, 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 board game world by storm. No. no. You know what I mean? And you and you can tell they, because of how fucking desperate and sad it is. Because they were. They'd probably be uh, investing in... Shit, dude, there's a lot of fucking uh, board games and card games that I've uh, found out about in the last couple of years just getting into, you know, MAGFest and a whole bunch of nerd shit and just oh, like, yeah. wow, mm -hmm. there's like this world of shit that I didn't know about. <laughs> Got a request by Izzy Skirmish. Uh, pretty cool name. And he requested a pretty interesting album name speaking of uh interesting nomenclature the name of this album is and i gotta look it up because <laughs> i'm not gonna get this right i already forgot it <laughs> the guy's name is weird science it's not a group it's just one guy it's just a dude named weird science but spelt with two e's instead of the way you would normally see it and it's apparently the drummer from coheed and cambria's like rap yeah. Side project? Normally it's embarrassing, right? Like, I remember we talked about uh, <laughs> D.D. Ramon and his fucking right. rap single. Like, it never pans out the way you think it's gonna. This album's not that bad, actually. It turns out to be pretty alright. The name of this album is Red Light Juliet Broadcast 3, colon, The Seer. I've seen the name, mm. weird science, spelled weird. Like, it's not even the way, it's not even spelled, like, the wrong way you think it would be spelled. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's not that weird. It's just kind of weird. Yeah. And then you have this name, and then you have this album cover, and I'm just like, I don't know what this is going to be. <laughs> we're about to gamble. Da -da -da. We're, we're rolling those dice by hitting that play button. And then it's like, oh, okay. It's just like, you know, it's all right. It's cool trip hop sort of stuff. Yeah. Right, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not nearly as out there and abstract as you thought it was going to be. Right, I thought this was going to be like, oh no, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have another one of those bands where it's just like, you should feel like shit for not liking the really super weird and inexplicable strange shit they're saying. You should think it's artistic because it's weird, goddammit. But it's just like, eh, you know, it's a, it's a little experimental, but it's like, it's very backpack, you know, hip hop, but with some trip hop sort of elements thrown in there. I was like, alright. You know, I'd let this live. My reaction was pretty much, do you remember on Monty Python with the uh, the Spanish Inquisition sketch? And at the end of it, it was like, we have ways of making you talk. Bring out the comfy chair. And they just bring out a regular ass chair and they're like, sit down in the chair. Ooh, it feels terrible, doesn't it? And she's like, no, eh, it's all right. <laughs> like, that's pretty much like, man, this is going to be so fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to have some stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's all right. Uh, I guess I mean, it's kind of weird. Like that—that that one track was unnecessarily gruesome. But besides that, talking about how you, uh, uh, different ways that people die and like gruesomely imagining it. Skipping ahead, I only needed to hear that song once. I wasn't about to listen to that song. Right? Anymore. I was like, look, I, I I appreciate what you're doing. I don't ever need to hear this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, it's not even like a bad song, it's just like, too unsettling for me that I was like, <laughs> yeah. I don't care to hear it again. <laughs> why? Yeah, I was like, why do I need to hear this? That's the thing. It's not that it's bad, just why do I need to listen to this? <laughs> yeah, and you know, and when I say it's not bad, it wasn't really that good either. Yeah, it's like, because it doesn't really go anywhere, right? Uh, the song is called Die Ugly, 
and they got and he's like, I hope I don't die ugly. I want to die peacefully and quietly. It's like, well, yeah, that's that's a pretty standard, universal, ideal way to go, right? So it's like, it's two verses, very in detail, in depth stories about possibly real people because he gives a name at the beginning of each verse and just these horrendous ways they die and then it's like i hope i don't die ugly but these poor bastards weren't so lucky and then it's like "Uh uh-huh and then the last verse is the best verse and it's not like it doesn't tie into the overall theme that's right yeah that's exactly what i was thinking i was just like well they didn't really die ugly it was just kind of ironic i guess <laughs> yeah it was just two people that shot each other it's like yeah but, oh no it was actually her and you weren't expecting it because of a throwaway line about her being you know into men again and then it's like ah the were a loop like i mean that's that's just an interesting storytelling element yeah it's not nearly on par of oh i was in a limo accident and the last thing she heard were the screams of her friends and the smell of burning <laughs> hair like yeah, how is that like, on the same level that yeah that's not on the same level <laughs> how is this verse the last that's, one like shouldn't yeah, this right. be like the like, most yeah. intense one that's building up towards that's what i was saying it's like this feels like a bit of a step down <laughs> yeah a bit <laughs> um, but i will say though that for better or worse that's one of the more memorable uh tracks on the album because a yeah. lot of them aren't really. They oddly deteriorate into like battle rap stuff. And I was just like, oh, hmm, all right. And, and here's the thing. Some of them are nice. He does have nice cadences. But some of them slip up so awkwardly. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah. The vessel has awakened. Uh, I mean, awoken. The uh. fear and trepidation spoke. No, you can't talk about fear and trepidation after you just made an awkward ass Will Smith fucking level uh. ear line like that. <laughs> People say I'm soft, more like Microsoft. <laughs> because you see, I'm getting millions of dollars. Uh, I see how I flipped it around. Uh. It's like, uh, you didn't though. You didn't. It was still cringy. <laughs> the album started out way better. Then it ended up. Um, the scores I had ranged in like the three and a half to four range by at the beginning, and then ended with like two to three for like the whole second half. Like yeah, I don't know was... what happened, but god oh, damn. American Idol, which this would have <sighs> been a clever pun like a decade ago. Like, dude. You got some interesting aspects on this album, mainly the instrumentals. Like, yes. you got some really dope, interesting as fuck. You got an intro that's, like, moody, and it's got these, like, pulses of electronic noise. And you're like, oh, it's cool. What, what, is that what the whole album's gonna be like? And it's like, no. Exactly, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> that was part of the build-up, too. You see the straight dust album cover. You see the name. You see all this stuff. And then the intro is like, there's no words. It's just weird. You're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's like going up and up on a roller coaster. You're like, oh, where is this going? And then it just sort of plateaus. It just goes really slow for the rest of it. Yeah, because, <laughs> like, the, the beat of the, of the second track, the first, like, actual full song kinda has a similar beat but not nearly as interesting yeah it's like why didn't it just Um, keep going with that i liked that way better and and do you remember like there's there are a lot of moments at the ends of songs where songs like slow down you know to emphasize just how serious this song was Mm. you know like uh the titular track because yes there is a song on here called red light juliet (laughs) three oh yeah Uh, another dot 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, the music sort of, like, slows down. It's like, because this was a really serious topic, and you hear the, the pianos go boom, 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 boom. You know, and it's just like, but the actual song itself was just this, man. Like, his flow has been pretty good for a lot of the other tracks, but it was absolutely pitiful on this one. This one was completely, he had some story that he really wanted to get out, and he did not think about how to package it in any way it just sound like it just i could hear the the etched out paper that this was on you know like still not figuring out what the flow of the song was like it just sounded so 
unfinished. So first draft. You know what I mean? Uh, With this one, it was like the first attempt at, like, hey, we got the drummer from Coheed and Cambria. He's rapping. All right, cool. We got a feature from the guitarist of the group. So mm. this was like the first track where it was actually trying to be like, yeah, we got some rock shit going on. It doesn't exactly yeah. sound like Coheed and Gambria, but, you know, it's its own thing. And I was like, cool, I dug the instrumentation on that one, but none of my notes have anything to do with the lyrics on that one. Like, everything yeah, I was... have written down is about the noises in the background, the solemn piano that kind of sound like the intro, uh, towards the end of the song where it's almost like a rock-out jam session. Like, oh, that's cool, but... Like, for most of those tracks, I really didn't care what the fuck he was saying. Is he talking about anything in specifics? Like, or is it, like, so specific, I just don't know what the fuck he's saying? That seems like a Ghostface Killer type of thing, but, like, you have to be good at rapping to make that work. First of all, you have a song called Red Light Juliet 3, so I'm already trying to figure out what is going on in the song. And then his flow is all over the place, so I can barely focus on what he's saying. And then when I hear what he's saying, he's saying, How can it be that you see what I've seen when I say it's a dream, I don't mean to intervene... But I know about the shadows that move in between to the daughter who escaped my blood, but never my heart, sweetie. Welcome to the dark. I feel like I just walked in in the middle of an anime, and I don't know <laughs> what the fuck the plot was. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, is that what's going on? Like, is it, like, so intricate? Because, like, I felt like I wasn't introduced to a character. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't Like, I, I mean, and maybe, you know, someone's going to be like, oh, uh, Red Light Juliet 3, dummy. It's the, uh, you know, the first two parts. You have to, you have to listen to the whole out. Al- you have to listen no. to all three albums in conjunction with each other. That's the only way you can enjoy this art. I ain't but doing it's that like, shit. I'm, I'm sorry. No, if I, if I have to do ho- that much fucking homework Mm-mm. in order to just enjoy it, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. The dude who requested the album didn't request all three of them. Sorry. Yeah, that's not I'm how that's not interested. That's that's not how that works. Yeah, so, that would have like, been a good idea, actually. <laughs> if they would have like methodically just made me go through all of them. It's like, well, I mean, now that I didn't have a choice but to go through all three of them, yes. Spoiler for the next album, a dude <laughs> did do that with the second request. <laughs> but, but yeah, I have it written down too, like you'd mentioned. The choruses on these songs are trash. Like, I thought the flow on American Idol was was good, but the chorus was so meh that I was just like, I don't fucking care. The, the a very solid oh, verse I thought on bass backwards, but the chorus and mm. bass backwards, like fucking right. Stop the over rapping. Well, well, first of all, on American Idol, I don't want to skip over this line. He says, you don't hustle hard. You borrowed your mother's car. I heard your new shit and it blew. Avatar. Ooh. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Homie. <laughs> you can hear, like, the sting in both of our, like, you know, it just uh, both of our minds are just like, oh, the cringe. Oh. Like, I'd almost rather him just never attempting... <laughs> like clever punchlines because they're never good and the thing is it's like it's that amongst this music that's supposed to sound super serial you guys and so it just makes it stand out even more <laughs> like don't say shit like that and then um and in my radar if i spot you then i'm dropping weight you cannot debate and measure by the profimate and then he says replace your eyes with your testicles it's nuts to see you populate uh, he thought that was clever. You see how it's like the over rapping because he yeah. knows he has to put a big word there, but it doesn't really work with the punchline to put a big word there when the when the big punch is supposed to be like the punchline of the weird put, replacing your eyes with your testicles thing. Because you know we're already trying to figure out how that works, and I'm like, it's nuts. <laughs> this is another like uh, example of like just trying to come up with as many like rhymes with this syllable as possible without mm. thinking about how it actually sounds he says you ain't on par so please pardon the bars part of me wants to laugh heartily like hardy har har Ooh. and it's just <laughs> and he's and it's the thing is he's saying it like seriously like you're supposed to be like i'm laughing heartily like hardy har har like oh no yeah. <laughs> that didn't work i saw holes was on their band camp as like a standalone single and all I have written down for that one is, eh. I actually really fucked with Holes. 
I didn't care for that one at all. Dude, okay, when when the when the little devil in the background saying the bury yourself. Oh, I hated that. I love. I, I, I like, thought that Whoa, was so shit. whack. <laughs> I thought that was so slick. What are you talking about? No. Oh, that was cool. I wasn't here for that shit at all. And dude, Cage, what the fuck happened, Cage? He might as well have not even been on the track. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> I remember when I was, like, first getting into rap, like, I was listening to, like, Immortal Technique mm-hmm. and Diabolic, and Cage was in there, and he fucking had an album called uh, uh, Movies for the Blind, I think it was called. I remember it. I, remember I it. fucked with that shit. What happened? <laughs> like, dude, I- I- this was not up to that same standard at all. You know, when someone throws in words, and, and this isn't that big of a problem because, you know, if it, I mean, being overly lyrical is not, like, profitable in hip-hop, so, of course, I don't talk about it as much, yeah. uh, but it is a thing. Like, I, my biggest example is, uh, my go-to example is the Tim Dog song, Fuck Compton, where he was like, so whether you think I'm just... Uh, a myth, the rift, the lift, the gift, the if, the fifth, the fifth, the shift, the split, the sin, control. It's just like, that didn't mean anything. That didn't mean anything. <laughs> you just know, oh, th- this is the lyric where he says, oh. <laughs> this is how I definitely don't know. It. This is how I definitely know he didn't know what the fuck he was saying. So let me put it all in context. He says, I'll crush Ice Cube. I'm cool with Ice-T, but N.W.A. ain't shit to me. Dre beating up on D from Pump It Up. Step to the dog and you'll get fucked up. And you think like, oh, all right, I'll give you some points, you know, say so like, yeah. And then he goes, I'm simplistic, imperialistic, idealistic, and I'm kicking the ballistics. I'm simplistic? Why would you lead with that? <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> what? People don't brag about being simple. <laughs> you know, that's, that's usually an insult. <laughs> In this song, Bass Ackwards, is a lyric where he goes, um, Serendipitous idiots declaring their own sovereignty pervert the innocence. Their pestilence comes obviously. And it's just like, just that inclusion, just like, their pestilence comes obviously. It just feels so, like, overwritten, you know? It is like, and the thing is, the rhyme that he used was sovereignty, so obviously, it's like the sov and the ob, but... Mm. in the middle kind of like doesn't really work so it's like you just put these two long words in here but their rhymes don't even really go together that well what i thought was weird about the sequence thing and and th- that comes up on the show every so often is you got the song die ugly which is just like uh it's just ick the song and then it's fucking followed up by your shovel the song about like hey you know this girl had a rough life she never let it get her down and she always got back up. And it's like, yeah, why is this after a song about, like, brutal death? You could have put that song anywhere. Why did it have to be, like, the one song that's kind of trying to be sweet? Why did it have to be there? You could have put it after an interlude or something, but... There was one lyric, and I couldn't place the song because I couldn't... I think this was one of the songs that didn't have lyrics at all, and so I just had to write it down. And the lyric was like ordinarily i'm ordinary as long as my dose is adjusted and my cocktail of meds is injected orally just that as a rhyme like you as a rapper you're trying to brag about yourself and you just wrote ordinarily i'm ordinary it's like do you just not have a lot of faith in yourself yeah exactly like Like, what the hell's going on that's not a good line and and of course the joke is i I, uh i'll be all right as long as i get my cocktail of meds because ooh, i'm so crazy and insane i'm on all these drugs you know the the whole like you know yeah it's like but but are you though like is exactly you you literally just said ordinarily i'm ordinary (laughs) like i'm sorry you just showcased your limitation of imagination as far as lyricism is concerned i thought lick a success was interesting to be on the album because it was like wait nope i got that confused with dogfight never mind lick a success sucked they are totally similar though (laughs) they're basically the same song and they're right after one after the other because dogfight is the one where is like the this is my journey in the in the music industry of like Mm -hmm. i was in a rock band and now i'm not in that rock band anymore (laughs) but even then it's not like amazing but it's better than lick a success lick a success was terrible 
Um, well, it's amazing in that he was signed to Outcast, but I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it sure like, is. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> Um, and, and then, then we end with the song featuring the singer from Coheed and Cambria, and he Man. didn't fit this style no, of music at, at all. all. <laughs> he didn't fit even slightly. It was so, like, and it's, like, way too epic, but it hasn't deserved it in any capacity. No, <laughs> yeah. not at all. That, it's that just like, whack. I, that's exactly what I feel. I feel like as I'm listening to the album, I'm just like, did we do something to deserve... Did something happen earlier in the album that I missed that's deserving this super <laughs> epic music right now? No. As hard as I was on the album, the rating still came out to a three. Because the first half of the album was so much stronger than the second half that it almost weighted out. But... Yeah, I'd give it about a three. There was a... There was like a serious line in the sand halfway through the album. I think it was right around Die Ugly. In addition... To that, we got another Patreon request requested by Earthquake, who requested Good and Evil 1 from King Crooked uh, earlier this year. And here we go with Good vs. Evil Part 2, uh, The Red Empire. Right off the bat, how do you think this album fared compared to the first one? Ah, I forgot to go back and uh, really listen to it, but I do remember absolutely enjoying the first one i remember i didn't like it as much as you did okay okay well i i remember enjoying the shit out of it though uh because i remember in intergalactic hustling was like i was like holy shit like this is so cool it's like gangster rap with the with the parliament funk with the space you know uh afro futuristic shit yeah i, li I like what he was doing i like the the futuristic like RoboCop sort of, uh, you know, we're doing a not very well hidden uh, uh, parallel to what's going on today, but in a dystopian future. And it's like, it's kind of cool. Like, you know, you understand it's a very obvious allegory, but like you're enjoying the ride because it's like really cool imagery. And on this album, it really seems like he, he just straight up abandoned like any of the futuristic aspects <laughs> <laughs> like that just went out the window <laughs> like there's no lasers or anything he mentions like a robocop once or twice uh, and everything once else or is like... twice <laughs> it's on every fucking song dude you kidding me what are you talking about like the the robocops that's on like every song yeah but it's not like it, he doesn't go it, it this isn't deltron 3030 you know no, what I mean? No, 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 no. And even even the song that references intergalactic hustling isn't that isn't that the Cowboy Bebop song? Like, which I really liked. I really liked that one. That was the uh, that was the intergal that was the intergalactic hustling of this album. I thought it was absolutely incredible. I, no, no fucking way. I didn't like that Whoa. one. Whoa! Oh man! Oh no! I just thought Is that was happening? a fucking mess. Is it happening again? <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> oh no! The song was giving me a fucking headache, where it was like, we're traveling through space, okay? We're, we're on planet X, all right. Gangster rap has been banned! It's like, yeah, okay. And then it's like, it goes into this weird song about fucking, and then it kind of <laughs> ends with a To Pimp a Butterfly style, like, acapella thing. And I, I was thought like, what the was fuck cool. is this shit about? I don't know, it was so, it was going in so many directions that I was just like, the fuck is it supposed to be? The way it ends is very interesting, but in a way that, like, just feels like it didn't have anywhere to go. Like, because it, it does sort of, like, he's rapping and he's just flowing, and then he has the lyric, he says, uh, they tell me Planet X is flat with no curvature, but I was flat broke with no furniture, so even if it's not circular, the system's still jerking you. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, dope shit, right? And he says, I'm about cities full of murderers, stolen legacy, educated by the burglars. I'm like, oh, shit. You know, it's kind of going into, like, you know, um, um, minorities in this country were educated by the oppressors in a way, because, you know, a lot of the educators and the where, places where they got the books from were the white people writing the history. So it's like, oh, snap, that's such a cool, like, way to flip it around. And then... The very next lyric is, on rainy days, I get gray skull like Eternia. She sucked my dick to my body cramped like a hernia. When this male fed with your ex, I'm returning her. That's let her talk. She's just mad. Let her talk. And I'm like, what? What's happening? What happened to the... <laughs> Wait, what was that about gray skull? I thought we were going to like wordplay about gray skull, but, but then you're just talking about... 
wait, you're getting head when it's raining? Why does it matter that it's raining? What? <laughs> like, what, did you did you say that it's raining just for the purpose of the gray skull? Because it would be gray outside, but but the dick. Yeah, and, and then, like you said, as it ends, it's just winding down. And now, like, there are some dope lyrics that come back in towards the end. And then, like, the beat cuts off. And he's just, it just seems like he's just going, you know, like he can't be stopped, like on that, you know, Eminem track where he's just, he's just flowing. You can't stop oh, him. Yeah. And then it turns into this was a love song that he wrote for his girl. And I was like, huh? Where, how do we get here? And then it turns into a legit love song. Like, it's not a joke. It's just like, uh, all right, but for real, let me tell you this love song. And at first, I know, I hear you, I hear you sign. That was Because the first couple awful. of lyrics, the first couple of lyrics was whack. But I thought everything after Mm-mm. that was pretty nice. I thought no, it was endearing. No. That, that had, you didn't that, like the chorus at all. You weren't no. feeling that. No. That, that had oh. no place on this album. I mean, it definitely... Did seem out of place. <laughs> and the reason why I thought it was kind of interesting, because it felt like there was supposed to be a story. Like, because you have an interlude at the beginning where he's writing the poem for her, and then you have it at the end where he's like, oh, we're about to make love, and then, oh, wait, what's going on outside? What's with all that fire? And then you see the revolution sort of happening. And I thought it was kind of interesting in the sense of, like, hey, you know, you never know when the revolution could happen. It could be, you know what I mean? It had interesting ideas, and I thought C- I thought City Lights was a fine track. Explosive I track. I just didn't like Thug Poetry and mm. Cowboy Bebop. Th- those two, honestly, honestly, were like two of the maybe four tracks oh, I thought uh. didn't need to be on here. Oh, but the rest okay, of the okay. album I thought was fine. And, and, and you know, I will say this though, uh, and maybe this is just the science, uh, the 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 uh, movie nerd in me, just n- mm. hating sequels in general. But uh, like the way it's all set up, it's just like so. Uh, they killed the puppet master in the last one, and I, I just came up. Is I'm the next person to be evil and corrupt, and it's just like, well, then what the fuck was the point of the first? The you know what I mean? Like you, when you have a story in which it's like aha, you know, there's the bad guy right there, and then we killed him. And then the next one is just like, but then anyway, it just kept going on. It didn't matter. We're, you still have to fight me. I'm the next guy. And it's just like, oh, okay. And like, I almost thought the point was, like, I was almost confused. It happened so quickly. I was like, wait, are we saying he is the bad oh. guy and he's taking the power mm-hmm. back? But then that didn't work because later on the album, he's completely in the mindset of, like, it's revolution. But I think it was just supposed to be the chorus. The chorus is yeah. just the, I'm the evil puppet and I'm taking over, whatever the fuck. But the reason why it doesn't work is, first of all, he doesn't even kill him at the end, does he? No, no. it's weird. And I wanted to comment on that. So, the last album was... I'm going up against this puppet master, and at the end, I remember there was, like, this big fuck build-up where it was, like, I fucking made his kids watch as I yeah, kill him, like, and I'm telling happened. him all the evil things he did, and this is why he's gonna die, and this is why you're gonna watch, and it's like, holy shit, wow! And then, the intro on this album is yeah. so is so fucking weird, I just wanted to... So You're absolutely right. The fucking the intro track, Wake Up Show intro... Uh, the Wake Up Show is playing this album in full. And again, as we talked about on previous reviews, the station playing the album gimmick isn't revisited uh, at all again. Like, it's never mentioned again. Yeah. The recap of the first album is so shoddy and awkward. All it is is... It plays a really quick sample of Eminem, which they play again later on the album because they couldn't get him again. They hmm. just had him. They just recycled the sample of him going, "Welcome to Planet X, motherfucker!" And it's like, "Okay, we're we're on Planet X." And then it's like, "I'm the evil puppet master. I gotta kill the puppet master. I killed the puppet master. All right, now it's part two. It's like, what the? What <laughs> is that really? Yeah. Is that how you're gonna wrap up? And is that all I needed to get out of that album?" <laughs> <laughs> and you fucking made me sit through an hour, and that that was all. That's all I needed to know. So then we got the second album, and you even look at the cover, and this was something I referenced or mentioned in the last album, was how he's talking about racism, he's talking about all this horrible shit that's going on, yeah. and for whatever reason, at that time, 
he never mentioned Trump by name. He only mentioned uh, Bernie. Bernie was the only presidential candidate he name dropped on on that album, which I thought, which I thought was strange, especially if you're talking about like racism specifically. You'd think he'd be talking about Trump. On this album, I was like, okay, now Trump is actually president. I thought the anger would be more focused. And what's odd is you went as far as to play samples of Trump speaking. Yeah. So so are we on Planet X or are we on Earth? Because you got the cover and you got a caricature of Trump. Okay. You yeah. got Red Hood. I imagine that's supposed to be a reference to the MAGA hat is like the Red Hood. And well, in, maybe... re- in Red Hood's plot, he, he's, he's kind of doing a weird Snoop Dogg impression, but I assumed he was supposed to be doing a Trump impression. I, I think it was just supposed to be like evil puppet master sort of thing. And, uh, you know what I'm talking about, though, right? Where it kind of yeah, sounded yeah. like Snoop was like, I'm doing this, and I'm putting yeah. the pollution in the air. And that fucking, ha 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 ha, what the fuck was that? Yeah, uh, and, and can we talk about the album cover? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the first album cover was cool, right? It was okay. You know, you had the dude with the, the pharaoh thing. He's got yeah. the futuristic mm-hmm. gun, the black backdrop. I'm not sure who, what face that is up top there, but, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh. You see fighting going on. Shit looks intense. With this one, this looks like, look. What the fuck is this? <laughs> a, a gathering of the most evil people in the world? And uh, there you've got maybe Trump bowing down before them. Oh yeah, thing. you have uh, Stalin, you know uh, uh, Osama bin Laden, Caesar, mm. Hitler, and they're all telling. T- all right. <laughs> and, and where is that on the album? Like, where is that focused yeah. anger or anything? Like, well, no, no, no. Like, there is, like, because the thing is, there, I actually feel like there is commentary all over this album. In fact, in a way that, like, makes it feel like he just got really angry and just dropped any of the creativity that he had on the first album and was just like, no, I'm just going to talk about, like, serious shit that's going on. Like, shoot back, uh, dear officer. Holy mm. shit. An incredible wow. track. Truth, yeah. why are you mad? It, he didn't actually say anything on it, but the lyricism was pretty fucking good on that one. <laughs> that was one of those just like, wait, but the song's called Truth, why aren't you saying anything on this one? And then, yo, yo, you gotta give it up to the fucking, oh, you mad because I'm styling on you. Oh, a little yo! sample. Yeah. <laughs> the callback. I was like, hey. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty slick. Yeah. But then you had songs like Give You That Hammer, which oh, was just, yeah. it just sounded like a Rick Ross song, you know? Typical trap beat and yeah, repetitive exactly. lyrics. And it felt unneeded, which Red Hood's plot, if we were, if we, if we were doing oh, this oh, album no, no, no. that Red was Hood's actually plot. telling a story. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> no, thank you. My, I'm, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I forgot. Um, I gotta show credit, yeah, and uh, and Red Red Hood's plot, ha 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 ha, <laughs> is also unneeded and unnecessary because you got a song later on that that basically tells the same fuck thing. Yeah. With uh, Adderall addict, that song is basically telling the same thing of the hood was an experiment. They gave they they put us here with no with no opportunity, and they gave us drugs and guns and saw what would kill us first. It's like okay, cool. You're really fleshing this idea out. Why did we have to, like, at the top of the album have... He's like, didn't you already say that? Yeah, I definitely got a feeling of, like, uh, yeah, I know, you said that already. <laughs> you but know? It, like, and it's like, you said it so much better in the second song exa- that I hated uh, that you fucking wasted it in the first one. That was garbage. Actually, like, what, why did that need to be there? When, what was the song that was like, uh, why is it that all the poisonings that have happened in this country are only in poor black neighborhoods? And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, that's a good fucking question. <laughs> I think that might have been. That was either Adderall Addict or Truth Why You Mad. I'm not sure. All you needed was that moment. You didn't need that four other times. We didn't even fucking talk about the MAGA Continues. He fucking snaps. Holy yeah. shit. Like, I 
I think we I think we're coming at this album in two different directions, honestly. We have the same opinion. Um no, we have the same observation, but we have mm. different opinions on it. Okay. I thought that this album was better because it ditched Ooh. some of the more abstract shit and was more focused because I thought it was a little corny mm. on the first one. And I thought that it was like actually getting down to quote unquote like brass tacks. I okay. thought this album benefited from that like you got songs like the maggot continues where it's just like Incredible. god damn he fucking yeah he goes in and it's funny that like it's such a serious song but it still manages to be fun yeah like it's still a cool song where like it's not it's like it's heady but it's not a downer like you can like it still fucking slaps it's still a fucking bop but then yeah like you said Give you the hammer. No. Um, I was kind uh, wait, of on wait. the fence about the Revolution. Tra- uh, the, the, uh, I think it was Revolution. Where it was like, the second verse was like, it almost d- uh, worked. You know, of course, you have the beginning where it's like, telling you the names of all these people that died. You know, it's like, these are people that are victims of police violence. So I'm like, alright, you know, you, you gotta have this for this type of song. I get it. And then you have the first verse. Dope, uh, uh, dope verse. And then you have the second verse from the Jai dude, uh, from Jai, a rambunctious, reckless rebels, reverse and revenge, reminded, re- and each, as soon as I heard it, I knew what they were doing. Like the R, mm. E, and then V, and then O, and then L, you know, with, with each alliteration. You. But then it ended on you, and then- It just ends on you! <laughs> what a like, fucking uh... tease! Why would it do that? <laughs> I was like, did you- did you or not? Did you not have anything for tea? Re- Revolu. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck like, is that? <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's like, dude, it, that's not the perfect. That's the perfect metaphor for this album. <laughs> it's just, I get where you're going. I get where you're going, but you didn't go all the way there. <laughs> and and like there was the opportunity there because it wasn't it wasn't a case of like. L O V E by Nat King Cole, where like each line <laughs> was one letter. There was like, all right, yeah. now we got four. We got like four bars in a row on the letter E on the letter R. Then yeah. we got a few on the letter. Like you didn't have one per letter, so it's like awkwardly spaced. And I don't know <laughs> what the fuck. Like, it just seems like you didn't have the first because, like, uh, you know, your brain can obviously pick up what's happening, and yeah. so. For you to specifically <laughs> have your brain go like, oh, hey, he's spelling out the word revolu. Uh, like, <laughs> oh, that's it. Maybe, maybe in like another language that means revolu. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> and I hate it because that was such a cool concept. And yeah. I was like, god damn it. Why did you waste it? You ruined that's it. It's a weird thing. To speci- like a weirdly creative thing to drop. <laughs> you know? I will say uh, Shoot Back was the best song on the album in oh, my opinion stellar. Woo. uh fantastic storytelling really great beat i thought that was overall uh fantastic definitely revisit that one um brainwashed n-word the six 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 uh i think this is another case of revolu um <laughs> r- really cool concept uh yes yes didn't really drive the point home it had some Man. cool lines in there we were just talking about uh, uh, give peace a chance, John Lennon, but I'm surrounded by Dom Lemons. Yeah, <laughs> good. It's like, all right, I see what you're doing. But it's like, I, I don't know, well, like, he had this character yeah, for, like, and- so fucking much of the intro. Right, playing, that's exactly like, what I was saying. It was just like, okay, you need to get into the song now. <laughs> yeah, like, he was doing like, devil's advocate of, like, uh, why do these people have to riot? We have things yeah. good in this country, but then it just goes, and it's like, I fucking got and, it. And the thing is, it's not like it gets straight to the verse. We get to the chorus first, which is reinforcing what the uh, what you already got, what the character was about. And then you get to the verse, and it's just like, I know. <laughs> and that's overall, I think my main complaint is that there were a lot of missed opportunities, because there was a lot of uh, potential here. I liked Stand. I thought that was a good one. Uh, I thought that was incredible. Uh, I, I also liked the, um, I think it was, there were like two parts where music just sort of cuts off. Oh yeah, Styles P in the intro of this song, where he talks about like, 
You know, I know I do gangster rap, but seriously, I have things I believe in, and I'm gonna stand up for those things. And it's just like, it just felt so strangely earnest coming from like a gangster rapper saying that. It's just like, I mean, look, like at the end of the day, all that shit, that's my art, like for real. Let's actually stand up for these people. You know what I mean? It just felt so much more human and just like, I don't know. It, it's kind of like with that Cameron interview uh on oh, the yeah, iridescent album where it's just like mm. this rapper is always like a larger than life person and they were just like so human in that second just like i know i do this thing and you see me as crazy because of that and but seriously there are issues going on and we need to, to like help solve them and uh it, it, it kind of it, it does that at the beginning but then it especially does that at the tail end where he says like hey you know i, I growing up i i wish that i had had more it basically was like this idea of like I wish that I would have had more people around me pushing me to be do more creative things. It kind of framed the album in a sort of uh well at least the last two albums as a sort of like hey this is me being creative. You know, you don't expect a gangster rapper to do all this like creative political shit, but it's just like I have that on my mind too. You know, I'm a human being who has different facets of who I am as well. And I thought that was just like oddly sobering. Uh I wish that there were more of those sci-fi elements to make that point matter that he says it here. And then, like I said, also, I'm like, that's a really cool message. What about the story, though? I wanted to finish the story. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> because that first time that story ended pretty fucking awesome. You just kind of copped out here. I think it comes down to, like, why you're constantly saying Robocops, uh, because... If you're too specific about actually killing real cops, then it can, you know, possibly be an issue. I think that's kind of why it was like, this album's yeah. obviously about a president. Yeah. Can't really go in that same direction. Ah, uh, so you're saying be... it's like a, it's like an opera thing where like they had to, they wanted to talk about the nobility of the time, but they couldn't directly say their name, so they're like, well, this opera set 200 years ago, see? Yeah, like, I don't know. It, it was a bit toothless, because they did try to make it too much of, like, a commentary, but still tried to shoehorn in that Planet X thing, but that didn't really play out. Yeah, no, don't don't come to this if you directly want a interesting story. That's the first album. This one yeah. is... Uh, I'm really angry about the fact that Trump won, <laughs> and I just have to make a dissertation about it. But still, doesn't mention Trump by name, but does mention Hillary. In in that one track where he goes, um, they're trying to box me in as a super predator like Hillary. Yeah. Like... I thought that was kind of interesting. Oh. That, that's, the, that's the deeper jab to go with, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Overall, what would you give this album? I would give this a solid four. I came out with the 3.5. Those are two Patreon-requested album reviews on the show this week. And if there is an album that you would like to hear us talk about uh, that we otherwise might not talk about, hit us up on Patreon at either patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse for that one-time donation you can request an album to be reviewed on the show. If this is your first time checking us out, all the rolled episodes are on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Just search Goin Off Podcast. That's G-O-I-N apostrophe off podcast. Follow us on Twitter so you can see what we're up to, see what we're talking about. And, uh, guess for the Going Off Podcast, until next week, I'm Muse. And I'm the Rap Critic. And before we go, Darren, I have, I have a question for you. Hmm. Whose house? Dem's house! Say what? Ha 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 ha!